as I call them. Mm-hmm. I don't. No. XFM 104.9. It's the Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah. So Dermot O'Diddley. Yes. Three weeks and weeks, weeks and weeks in a row he doesn't even turn up. And now suddenly he's all over breakfast. I noticed, yeah, he's standing in for the breakfast show. Why weren't we asked to do that? Well, it's we were. Upsetting. Were we? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah, but I don't want to get up that early, do I? Sure, sure. Uh, I feel a bit hungover today, actually. Do you? Yeah. What's happening? What, what, were you partying last night, were you? Well, not partying. We just went out, went out for a couple of drinks, then had a meal, and then went to the borderline and saw about, I'll tell you about that. It's good. You saw a band? That's the first yeah. time in years, isn't it? It is, yeah. Like yeah, because, no, so, do you know John Sim, the actor? Mm, not really. He's in this band, right, called Magic, Magic Alex. And it was really good. They're sort of like, sort of like a friendly oasis. They got, you know, sort of yeah, quite, yeah, yeah. M- you know, it's quite mank sort of feel, but it's really good. Good songs and everything. Is nice. he the singer? Yeah, no, he's a guitarist. Nice call. Right. But, it was full of actors, because it, because it, right? and I felt quite tall. That's ludicrous, because you're See, a very short man. Well, I am. I'm sort of, um, I was average, but now I'm not, I don't think. Mm. Five for eight, that's right. But there, I was like quite, it was like Lilliput. <laughs> so I just, I just got to hang out at actors' <laughs> dudes. Well, all right, well, yeah. This is the reason, because act, actors are often very, quite handsome people, but yet they're always quite yeah, obnoxious. Yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are. No, I mean, they're normally quite obnoxious, Rick. Again, you know, you're a good example <laughs> of that. And yet, yet, I think it must be the small man complex. That's what makes them so obnoxious and so kind of desperate for attention. Didn't right. realise it before. Steady on. Because of course, I tower above everyone. You do, don't you? I'm, uh, for people who don't know who are listening, I'm six foot seven inches tall. That's, 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 that's high. Yeah. That's and, big. and, and, um, for people who've never seen him, he doesn't hold it well. It's not like he's a sort of handsome athlete, is it, Carl? He's a bit of a, what, what do you call him? A t- Carl, uh, don't answer. No, 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 no. Don't get drawn into that. No, you know, get, you, you know, know the game he's playing. No, 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 no. Do you know yesterday when you were in the office? Yeah. You did a little move <laughs> and it reminded me of Blakey. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot oh, I hate you, Gervais. Oh, I hate you, Pilkington. That's is stance. Yeah, but even he was, he held it a little bit better, didn't he? Because he was a man, you know, yeah. he had a big coat and everything, and a peak cap. But, uh, yeah. I can't believe you. Like, I've not suffered enough from being freakishly tall. Now, two of my best buddies, yeah. live on radio, are just... It's not just the height, though, is it? It's the <laughs> posture and the face and everything. But he's got your places, oh. on not it? <laughs> no. What do you mean he's got in places? I think I think people give you a bit more of a chance in in your career and stuff. Cause it's like, uh, what? Well, yeah, stacking shelves because <laughs> I can reach to a high level. <laughs> <laughs> Muse, plug in, baby, on XFM one hundred four point nine. Rick, Ricky Gervais, I, go on. Well, yeah, but I know you guys are laughing about the height thing, and uh, for those that have only just tuned in, I am six foot seven inches tall, which is which is tall, and that's big. And I, you know, I pride myself on it in a way. You know, I've worked hard. I've not smoked. I <laughs> ate well. You know, yeah. it's an accomplishment. But obviously, I didn't have much involvement in it. I just am, and it's a curse because mainly the problem is that you you can't get stuff. You can't get clothes. You can't get shoes. You know? Yeah, size 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 fourteen feet. Yeah, that's. But it is genuine, and I don't know. I mean, it costs a lot to buy a pair of size fourteen shoes, and it, so I don't. I mean, if you were poor, if you were genuinely poor, I don't know how you'd afford to be tall because <laughs> the clothing costs more. Everything costs. I've more. I've seen this in comics that you'd you'd actually go to school in a barrel, wearing a barrel with right. just braces. It'd yeah. just be a barrel, like that, and you'd have sort of. Flip flops, uh, <laughs> and you'd um, take a mule yeah. with you. They all had a mule, didn't they? The but poor people, people always think like it, that they like you'll be in a pub or something, and people. I mean, people just think they can talk to you about it. They just think, oh, you are you are lanky. It's just like because it's like. They but think, that really annoys you, doesn't it? Well, it annoys me because it's like they think I should be proud of it. Like well, exactly, but that they don't think that this uh, this is not a disadvantage. This is not a disability, is it? You're you're taller than most people. It might it get a disability. To, no, no, no. If you were if you were eight foot three, it'd be slightly disabilitating. You would, you know, but you're. What? Disabilitating? <laughs> yeah. No, you're a medical man, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> but, no, the point is, it's a disabilitating because <laughs> you go on public transport. Like, if you're on a coach. Oh, uh, yeah. You, the only place I can sit on a coach is that seat. On the driver's lap. Either, either on the driver's lap or that seat at the very end. Yeah. You know, where, which is kind of, which sits into the aisle. Yeah. That's the only place I can well, sit. Well, you just st- and stand up, some sort of stand up. at the back, waving at drivers. You could drive it seat. from the back. <laughs> 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 Here he comes, watch it. Yeah. Were, were, were you a tall baby? Oh, <laughs> 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 Mr. and Mrs. Merchant, uh, you've given birth to a basketball player. <laughs> Look at his dribble already. Were well, you a tall baby? Babies aren't tall. Oh, well, what, All I, right. At what point did did you suddenly like Jesus? Nothing fits me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't happen overnight. Carl. Let's do a little graph. How tall are you at five? Oh, I don't know. Three foot. Three foot. How tall are you at twelve? Six foot. 
six. <laughs> what are you really? I don't know, do I? How do I remember? I don't remember this. Well, when did teachers start calling you freak boy and really, lanky? They didn't. They was, it wasn't didn't they? So much. It was no. You went to a funny school. <laughs> I went bowling with him once. Well, I'd never been bowling before, and he'd been once before. And he went, "Let's go to this bowl." We went to a bowling alley, right? And um, you have to wear these special shoes. Now they're they're sort of like pointed things anyway, and they're um, multicoloured, sort of red and green. Like, they look pretty weird. And uh, and the woman said to me, "Oh, what size?" I said, "Oh, eight. She went, yeah. So what size are you? He went fourteen. She went fourteen. He went, "You probably haven't got them." He goes, "She goes, yeah, I think we have got one pair." And she put them on the table, and it was like Krusty the Clown. And I just started laughing. They looked so long, and he had to run round this bowling alley in these freaky clown yeah, but shoes. But they don't look freaky clown like when I'm wearing them, because the rest of me is in proportion to it. It looks like a little wall bracket. The one of the worst thing, one of the worst things that happened to me was when I was like, I don't know, when I was about sixteen or something. We went to um. It's a fire uh, alarm there's a fire alarm going off. There's a fire alarm going off. And the off fire the light's going off. Yeah. Should, should, should we not just should maybe play a record and go and check that out? Wrap it up if you want. Oh, no. No, not wrap it up. Play a record. I'm gonna go. No, the See fire has gone off, Rick. It's gone off. Oh! What well, we might have burned down! Yeah, I think we'd know about it. The flames licking around our ankles would be a clue. God. I'm gonna go and investigate. Oh, you shouldn't ignore oh, a fire alarm. Yeah. Blimey! Yeah, look, look We're entertaining oh, the look, nation. Oh, look at him, he's scared of fire! <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Mercury Rev. The dark is rising. That's a good song, isn't it? I noticed that you're, um, investigating the fire. Mainly involved wandering out into the office, looking around a bit, then coming back. Yeah. What did you find out? There was no fire. There was no fire. No. Right. right. But I love that. Back. Imagine that though. Imagine like, that there's a fire and there's loads of fire and they go get back and you go to the fire and all oh, get back. 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 Oh look at him. I would. I would. And actually yeah. justify to. Okay. There's heavy shelling, lads. Retreat. Oh back, Sarge. I'm sorry. Back, Sarge. Yeah. Just there was a fire. Like, I'd never seen it before. A fire thing going off. There was a fire alarm. I thought, oh, let's at least have a look if there's a fire. That's all I thought. See, there's some official coming in now to tell us we should have been running out. There's no fire. Yeah, well, you can't just stop entertaining, you know, the people of London just because there's a fire. This isn't the Titanic. <laughs> oh, I don't have to carry on playing. I don't know. I, it feels I, like a bit of a sinking shit. Really. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice one. Oh, nice one. I don't know who oh. I'm taking off then. Probably me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, listen, let me just tell you briefly. This this is a, another example of of how people can just exploit you and make fun of you when you're tall. Yeah. Um, I was quite tall, I've always been like about six foot seven for quite a while now. And when I was about sixteen, um, I went to a, a big New Year's celebration in Bristol where I come from. And they, everyone kind of congregates in this big sort of part of town and there's all people dancing around, like in Trafalgar Square. And um, I was there, like somehow I sort of, I just picked up a balloon somewhere along the line, one of those kind of helium sort of balloons, and I was holding that and sort of dancing around. And um, these two girls came up to me and I was thinking, yeah, okay, you know, it's New Year's Eve, brilliant, you know, that's, uh, that's the, my kind of party. Yeah. And they came up and they went, hey. Once a year. And they went, <laughs> they said, uh, you're going to be here for long? And I went, well, maybe. And they said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you <laughs> in about an hour. I went, what do you mean? I went, well, it's just because we can see you wherever you are. <laughs> Don't worry, you can move around and stuff, we'll see you with the balloon. Just arrange uh, to meet some friends. I here. love that, a landmark. So, like, so pilots use that. Oh, we're just coming in, uh, there's, uh, we'll be, uh, uh, when we see Steve Merchant, we'll be descending <laughs> to Bristol Temple Mead. What's really funny is New Year's Eve, Trafalgar Square, you've got a huge column, but the use yeah. Steve is like the meeting point. Steve's got a huge column. <laughs> Brilliant, Rick, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Award winning comedy from Monday, it took you back, didn't it? Happy Mondays there, Manxie. Now, Carl's like really getting down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. Got come any on. Vera's? Oh, come on, Mel. Ah. Did it take you back, did it? Yeah. How old are you? 29. 29. So you were, oh, you were just going in, uh, out of your teens. I'm a Virgo. No. What? No. Yeah. That, that, no. You don't understand. It's just, uh, I'm Rick, a Virgo. I thought we discussed about involving Carl. <laughs> yeah, in sorry, discussion. yeah. yeah. The management have told us we're just not allowed to do it. <laughs> We've had emails from yeah. people. Please don't so speak to Carl. It's cruel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. On the cusp. Can I just Virgo. make an appeal? I don't want to- On the cusp, the Virgo, he said. <laughs> Still going through with it. Doesn't know what's going on, does he? <laughs> just wave bright objects at him. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, we've got a competition this, Steve. We have, but before we mention that, can I just ask something? I don't want to exploit our position on the radio. No. But I wonder, because I'm very tall, and it's very tricky for me to get size 14 shoes and big clothes and stuff, can I just get people to send some stuff if, if like, maybe they own a shop which Yeah, but it'd be, it'd stuff? be things like homemade clogs That's that people cool. have carved out of chunks of wood they found That's in whatever. the shed. Whatever. It's not really great. America. When I was in America, uh, everyone says to me, oh, you go to America. It is a cacool. I made out of my own skin. <laughs> Um, when I was in America, everyone told me like it would be re- you know really easy to get big clothes and big shoes and that because they're all huge and all freaks over there. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I steady on. And I was wandering around New York and I was going in a few shops, kind of saying you know we've got size fourteen, US fifteen shoes, and they were going no, they, we want <laughs> is that the difference yeah. one? And they literally were laughing at me. There was a couple of shops where they literally laugh and get like someone else in and come and look at the tall freaky Englishman. Really? And then one guy said, oh, I remember we had someone come in here once and he said he'd been to a shop which sold kind of stuff for really tall people and and. Um, and he said, I think I can remember the address, and he sort of looked through the, the sort of telephone directory, and he made a note of it. And I went on the subway, and I went through and all Lily the put. And I, li- I went, cause it took me ages to get in, and really hard to find it. And I finally went in there, I've never seen it, it was heaving, right, with freaks. It really? Was amazing. They were, it was like, they were just kind of gargoyles, it was like something from Lord of the Rings. They were just kind of these tall people and kind of gnarled. Did they turn around attention. and start bowing to you? It was incredible. Yeah. And I went in and I just said, hi, I'm looking for a kind of da 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 sort of thing. The guy went, yeah, sure, and he sort of hobbled off into the darkness and came back with exactly the kind of pair of shoes I wanted. I couldn't believe my luck. It might be a magic shop. But it was like, it was like that shop in, um, Mr. Ben. It might have been a dream though, you yeah. see. <laughs> Did you, have you still actually got the shoes? No. Because when Mr. Ben sort of like, goes back and wakes up next day, he finds like a feather in his pocket where he remembers he, he was a, you know, a 17th century sort of squire or something, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> uh, the classic episode of Mr. Ben when he becomes <laughs> a 17th century <laughs> squire. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Mr. Ben learns to play the harpsichord. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, like, when Mr. Ben, that, that black shopkeeper goes, right, are you going to pay for that? You're, yeah, not, you're not just going to go yeah. through that door and then have an adventure and come back, oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> no, you're not, you're barred. Yeah. You just make me sick. We, we wait nothing from you. <laughs> well, I'm not in this for your amusement, Mr. Ben. Is it only Ben who's got the insider knowledge about the magical doorway? or, or I don't know, because that, that fella in the fez doesn't seem to have anyone else there. No, rarely. He's always grinning, though. He knows yeah. something. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a documentary, though, is it? It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a kid's show, isn't it? I'm trying to remember. No, it's um, not. It's just a kid's show, so anything sure. can happen. Yeah. That's yeah. A, a lot of people make that mistake sure. when they slag off something like Scooby Doo or oh. Thundercats. It's not not really no, reality. Real. It's just a kid's. Well, they, yeah. Mr. Ben, they were all on drugs, weren't they? Like Magic Round of My mate <laughs> fancied Cheetera from Thundercats. I Cheetera. Um, Which one was Cheetera? I quite like She Was. She was. She was the lovely. She was a lovely cat. Yeah, she was a real dish. What's the what's the what's the sexiest cartoon? Uh, I'm glad you've asked. Uh, a lot of people say Jessica Rabbit. They do, and they'd be right to say that because she's actually human. She's not an animal, which is good. What? Isn't she? No, no. She's she's a normal woman married to a rabbit. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, not. She's, yeah, Jessica Rabbit. Is that what she got a surname, Rabbit? But yeah, she's not actually. She's a rabbit. married Roger Rabbit, but she's not actually a rabbit. She's a glamorous woman. Is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the weird thing about it. That's weird, though, isn't it? It is weird. The idea of a rabbit having sex with a beautiful woman. That is the weirdest thing about it. How does that make you feel? Annoyed, if I'm honest. Yeah, but I bought some bunny ears just after I saw the film. Oh, hip hop! You got your hip hop. Oh track. yeah, good. No, no, no. Um, this album was uh, rated by a lot of people last year. Uh, my sources tell me that it's being re-released and re-recorded this yeah. year. Anyway, Nerd are the outfit. Uh, they're better known as the Neptunes, who are kind sure. of uh, sort of hip hop R and B producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think yeah, this yeah, track yeah, may yeah. have featured on a giveaway CD. It did. On the NME. It did. Anyway, it's Dynamite. It's from the album In Search of by Nerd, and it's Bobby James. Play it. Nerd from the album In Search Of, and that's Bobby James. It's brilliant. It's great. It's, it? it's really bit. It reminds me a little bit of um, Warren G. That that chorus. Sure. Yeah. 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 And apparently the album, uh, I don't, it's, it was on kind of limited release, so it's quite tricky to get hold of, but as I say, I think they're re-releasing it. Well, you should tape off the radio, because we're doing yeah. lots of features. Yeah, no, I'll maybe play that again in the future, just tape it off. I'll tell you what, I'll play the whole album over the course of the like, next couple of weeks. Yeah, and we'll just tell you, I mean, you know, we'll we well, won't have us talking, we just go now and you I mean, can press play and record. I mean, we can't actually say, we can't advocate you tape off the radio because that's breaking No, or maybe I'll just do some bootlegs of the, you know, the yeah. car, I can just well, sell so yeah, a Camden to, Market it, you know, for yeah. four quid. <laughs> exactly, fine. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we won't, I mean, we, you know, we shouldn't really say that, but... Warren G is, um, Dr. Dre's cousin, is he, or something? Is he, is... Warren that G, right? I think, is his cousin, yeah. But I, I know he's got a famous brother as well, and I found, I, I think it's something like Nate Dogg. It could well be Nate Dogg. We could maybe someone would know that and could yeah. email you, or phone you, in. Yeah, or well, email maybe kind of. This is the free. best thing about being on the um, radio. I can I can think of something. There was a competition right on Virgin, right? I was listening. Virgin, I think one oh five point. No, what is it? 
I can't remember. Um, Good station. Good station. Good station. Um, And they had a competition, right? And it was to win a trip to... America for the on the Enterprise. It was all about space. And there was one there was one question had to answer three right. And it was who was the first one into space? Yuri Gagarin. Um, it was dinner. And then the third question was um, how how much bigger than the Moon is the Sun? Is it twice as big or four times as big? And this one went four times as big. Went correct. It's not. It's hundreds it's of times bigger. A lot more big, I can't yeah. believe. Uh, can someone look that up on the internet? And how many times bigger is the Sun than the Moon? It's not four times. It's it's huge. It's like beach ball to a P type dimension. Which DJ was oh. it? Do you remember on Virgin? I can't remember, but it was the one on sort of about eleven o'clock. Oh, 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 wouldn't want to be him. Right yeah, he's embarrassed himself. When well, we do quizzes, we never get anything wrong. That's true. Enough. During that track, I'm I'm chilling out. I'm loving it, aren't yeah. I? Carl goes, do you know how baguettes came about? <laughs> do you know how baguettes come about? I went, go on, and Steve went, no, save it. Wait a minute, though. I'm thinking, Rick. People are going to be desperate to know the answer to that. Why don't we play some uh, ads and some music and stuff? It's like a cliffhanger. Exactly. How did ba- baguettes come about? Whatever he says is going to be good. Stay isn't tuned it? to XFM to find out. Hives. I hate to say I told you so. So I love that sort of stuff. Mm. That and the Strokes. Well, it's so much better than this new metal rubbish, isn't it? Definitely. Now, most people think we talk rubbish on air. Yep. If they could hear the conversations Off that there. go on, I know. But um, someone just emailed in saying the sun is indeed about four hundred times bigger than the moon. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, that that DJ must have looked it up and said um, four hundred times. That can't be right. It's probably they probably it's probably printing error four times. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can be four hundred times <laughs> bigger than the moon. Um, <laughs> Carl went, yeah, but uh, the sun, it's only got a million years, isn't it? I went, what? He went, on that space programme, it said that in a million years, the sun will be destroyed. And he said, and then we're all shafted. <laughs> right? I went, I laughed. Steve went, no, it's okay. By then, we'll be on another planet. <laughs> no, I think that's yeah. true. We'll have colonised right. other planets. Carl went, yeah, but there'd be no sun. Steve went, well, there's other suns, which is true. Carl went... Well, I went, well, yeah, ev- every star is a sun. Carl went, mm, well, not not really. Not really. Don't, don't believe that, <laughs> do you? And I went, no, it is. The sun is just a star. It's not even a particularly big star. Carl went, well, why didn't they say that instead of worrying me? <laughs> instead of worrying me. In a million years time. Yeah. I love yeah. Carl, he's been preserved, brought back to life, <laughs> and he's now the ruler of the world. Just a head in yeah. a fish tank. <laughs> and he speaks like this. I am Pilkington. <laughs> the reason, the reason you became king of the universe, of course, is because of your fascinating French bread anecdote. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah come on the then. What? Well, how? Uh, how did baguettes come about? If this is going to be someone uh, cooked a loaf a bit wrong and said, oh, "I can still make a sandwich out of it," <laughs> I'm going to hit is you. That it? No, 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 no. Go on then. Um, right, Napoleon, when he was at war and that with um, Russia. Uh-huh. 1812, yeah. Yeah, all his soldiers were like, you know, not used to the cold weather and that. <laughs> so they said, take, take some clothes in your bag with you because it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be nippy, nippy yeah. out there. So um, they put all the clothes in the bag. Sure. Didn't they were told? Thought, oh, it's Napoleon for Christ's sake. No I'm room all... for any food. No room for You're anything. joking. So um, could they make some sort of like sandwich? <laughs> no, it won't fit because I've got all the clothes. You have to take extra yeah. gear. Sure, sure. Them. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I can that, see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there a baguette shaped gap <laughs> left in their holdall? They thought, let's make some bread that you can fit down your trouser leg. What? That's not true! <laughs> no, it's not! Oh, I read it in Euston train station. I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read it? It was scrawled on the wall in graffiti. No, no, no. Yeah. Do you know the upper was it also <laughs> meet me here for cock fun at 12 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> the upper cross sandwich <laughs> shop, Euston station. It's on the wall. What do you mean it's on the wall? Do you know how it says like, <laughs> sail on at Dixon's or whatever? Yeah. Next to that there was like a bit of information, once you've read the stuff on Dixon's- Baguette information. There was, there was a big thing about <laughs> history of the baguette. I read it <laughs> and I thought, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we gotta we got make a sandwich we can spit down our trouser leg. <sighs> But how can you march and fight with a huge piece of bread down your uh, train? Oh, that would be intimidating. You see them coming, you go, sacre bleu, look at the <laughs> yeah. size of them. They're, they're, they're big fellas. Well, oh, blimey. I, I, I can't help but feel that could be a practical joke at your expense. Yeah. yeah. Do you do Well, the Earl of Sandwich... Do you Sandwich, ever question anything the, you read? If it's that, printed up, is that, yeah. like, fact for you, then? Well, it's not funny. I mean, if they were trying to be funny, it's like... Oof. It's not, is it? So it's information. Have you heard us? Things sometimes the, the, want to no, be that's, funny that's, when that's exactly what happened with the sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich wanted somebody who could fit down his pants. <laughs> and uh, it was a, those triangle cut sandwiches wrapped in cling film were perfect. Uh, um, you might be right. You might be right. 
I am. Because the cordage pasty is so they could drop it down the mines, isn't it? Is they, it? Yeah, they wrapped it up in a, they wrapped up like meat and vegetables in pastry, and they sort of crimped it, and it was like a little, and they dropped it down the mine. So, yeah, that's how that came about. And bagels were originally made so that people could play hoopla, <laughs> but then <laughs> eat afterwards. <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> that is true. Carl. Well, this anyway, like Carmi Bluff. Is yeah. Well, true. <laughs> yeah, they're well, all true. They're all true. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your well, kids that when you have them. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if they're still alive in a million years. <laughs> well, it might be true. Can someone confirm um, that baguette fact that it was so Napoleon could stick it down Not his trousers? Not him, his no. soldiers. People, obviously, we inflamed uh, and provoked well, about actually, the, the, the Cornish with... pasty. Um, I've got a couple of amendments to that. The, the crusty bit, you know, is actually as a handle, because obviously the mines had dirty hands and they'd eat the all the stuff in the pasty and they'd be left with this sort of crust and they could throw that away. Mm -hmm. Also, someone told us that at one end was a, like apple. Mm -hmm. So you have a little sweet as well. A little dessert. So, there you go. You noticed how, like, over the years we've been doing this, you know, way mm. back when we started XFM, no one ever contributes when we ask about the music, when no. we ask about hip hop, no. or their, you know, opinions on that, anything no. important. No. But, start talking about pasties. Yeah. We've had about five phone calls. Yeah. And like, someone, someone phoned up to confirm so they used to work for Upper Crust, and uh, basically, Carl got all excited. So, uh, so it is true. She went, well, I don't know if it's true. I've I've read the same sign you yeah. did, Carl. Interestingly, it, there's an email here that says, uh, which basically offers a history of the baguette, yeah. and uh, talks about after the revolution, the government decreed that all of France must eat the same bread, and it was up to the bakers to bake this bread of equality. Mm. Um, and then Napoleon kind of um, made sure it was a particular, he kind of set in. in yeah, in, in obviously on the bread you can eat anything you find in the garden, mm. frogs, snails, bits of horse, but squid. The interesting, th the interesting thing is, Rick, that there's no mention of sticking it down your trousers whilst going to war. The French have tried to keep that secret for <laughs> over a hundred years, it was Steve. Only the upper crust, people. The yeah, crust, yeah, know, nearly, nearly 200 know. years, that is a top secret. Somehow Houston Station upper crust got hold of a document, <laughs> left behind in an old sea chest, possibly Napoleon's, could have been Josephine's. Unfortunately, jotted it down. He's kicking himself now. Oh, I cannot believe I left a note. <laughs> if he talked like that. He did. He did, he did that, yeah, yeah, he talked English, exactly. but in a very funny <laughs> French exactly. accent. Do you remember, it's there was one thing that, talking about funny French accents, do you remember, you remember Allo Allo? Yeah. Remember, it was on about five o'clock in the afternoon, but they still meant, because it was a funny Frenchman, it was that, that English guy who was posing as a French police yeah. officer. it's very complicated He would often walk by, and he, I remember there was one where he said, uh, I was pissing by the door when I heard the shit. Oh yeah. Now that's passing I'm by the door. That. I'm allowed passing to say that. by the door when I heard a shot. That's what he's saying. I'm allowed yeah. to say that at two o'clock mm. because that I'm just saying I'm talking in a French accent. Yeah. I was pissing by the door when I heard a shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Because I'm speaking French, Carl. Do, do, you, do, you, know, do you know what I mean? That's the rule. Do you know why people tinkle the tink the glasses before they have a drink? Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that, Carl. Is it about poison? It is. Here we are. What would it make a different noise? Oh. Brilliant. Go on, explain Why? it. You explain it, Steve. No, 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 don't Steve, you explain it, Carl. <laughs> Go on, oh, I've started so I'll finish. Go on, Carl, explain why they tink the glasses. Ages ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> That's not one of my film reviews! <laughs> Years ago, welcome to History Now. Now, ages ago, only people with money had drinking or something. Keep going, Carl. Keep like, going. Like spirit and stuff, so yeah. they'd, um, it's, it's like businessmen, business, businessmen. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> this is getting to be cool, so, isn't it? This is amazing. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Why go did on. you open your mouth, Carl? <laughs> what were you hoping was the best that could happen? Because you were trying to make me look stupid before with the planet, so I'm- Where is you now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, no, come on. Biz, bib, bib, businessmen. <laughs> businessmen, no, businessmen with money. I've got to drink and ching. Okay, so then, we'll so they'd, drink. So they'd, so they'd nip round to have a chat about the, whatever they're earning money with. <laughs> and they'd say, right, do you want a drink then? And yeah. they'd go, oh yeah, that'd be alright. Yeah. So, yeah. rather than like, um, just pouring it out of a bottle into a glass and saying, there you go, it, it could be going, hang on a minute. It could be poisoning me here and trying to like, nip me business idea. Yeah. yeah. So what they'd do, it, it sort of pour a bit of his drink into the other person's glass and you get that tink noise. 
I'm not slight like cheers, you know. No, 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 Carl, I, I just have a slight amendment there. I think what it was was you're absolutely right that they would then test each yeah. other's drinks to see that, show that it wasn't poison. But over the years, that was reduced to just chinking the glasses by way of saying, let's not actually bother going through the whole rigmarole. Mm. They just did the yeah. chinking of the glasses. Yeah, well, kind of I, 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 yeah that's, that's, that's good. <sighs> it was exhausting though, wasn't it? I know. Was it worth it, do you think? Well, I, I like that because people carry that with them now. Mm. When they do that, they think, oh... That bloke's definitely not trying to poison me. Yeah. So the, the horrible thing is that now, when I do the glasses, I can laugh and go, they don't know I've poisoned them. <laughs> exactly. You should always do the pouring back and forth. <laughs> it's a shortcut, it's a slippery slope. You know, just be careful. Ash, there's a star. One of my bands of 2001, Ash. Was it? Yeah, they've come through. I didn't like them at first. Thought, uh, you know, a bit, a bit too lo-fi. But they I think they've, good, yeah. they've worked at it. They do good songs. They're good performers, and I think they're probably thoroughly nice chaps. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We didn't say hello because we were away for a couple of weeks. We didn't come back and go, oh, we're back, did we? It's like nothing ever happened. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Do um, you have a good Christmas? Yeah, you. Yeah. Carl. Yeah, it's all right. Lovely. Okay, let's crack on. Good. My um. I went on holiday after Christmas, yeah, yeah. and um, so did uh, our mutual friend, Phil Bowker. Yeah, good man. He, 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 he was in Lanzarote and he told me one of the funny... I don't know if I can tell this on the radio. I'll have to say the C word, I'll just go... It's in a sentence, so i just go, you, C, when it comes, and you'll know that he's saying the sure. terrible word. Um, just, you know, didn't want to ruin the anecdote. Anyway, uh, they're walking along one evening in Lanzarote, and there's lots of Brits there, apparently, and Phil over here's... Uh, a sort of a married couple arguing. They're having to go home a bit early. And she's saying to him, she went, for Christ's sake, every time we come out drinking, you always shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. Always. Not once. So he's going, ah, oh, I've told you, he said, it's not the drink, it's the weather. She went, the weather. You'll be blaming the food next, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they should have got married. Wow. Or mate, when did you think the shooting itself started? Must have been after the marriage because if it, it they, you know, you were caught in and you go, like, went, went out with uh, uh, Derek again, did you last night? Yeah, how was it? It was, the evening was lovely, the meals nice, but he shot himself again. <laughs> that's, that's five dates, five different heaps of shit. But I think I can change him. I think I can change him, yeah. It must have happened after the marrying. Or he just might have think, oh god, I've got, or he's got to that age where I think, look, I'll just empty it when I get home. Yeah. I'm not going to keep going up and going to the toilet, you know. It's the ice that does it. Yeah, Carl is right, I think. It is the ice. What do you mean? People forget, you know, they say, oh, don't, don't drink the water when you're on holiday, and they, and they don't, they drink, you know, they buy Evian and stuff. Oh, I see. They forget about the ice. The ice cubes, you're right, in a bar. Made from tap water. And that can do it, can it? Yeah. But what she said every time you're drinking, I assume that she wasn't drinking ice then. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, why is it just having to well, Let's be honest, everyone that goes on holiday doesn't end up crapping themselves. Yeah, yeah, they usually make it to a it, toilet. He does it every time he drinks, doesn't he? Yeah, well, apparently. Just don't let him carry the baguettes. <laughs> 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 ah, he's good, isn't he? Oh, Carl comes out with something. He does now and again, High doesn't he? Carl, that was sweet, man. That yeah, sweet. nice one. Yeah, respect you. Right, we've got another feature now. Yes, this is a feature which we introduced before Christmas, and it was so popular, we brought it into 2002 <laughs> as well. Yeah. And it's we've carried it over with us. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. And I don't, th I don't think we'll ever run out of features for yeah, it. I don't uh, think so. Go on, then what's the feature it's called, Steve? Brilliantly, it's rather brilliantly called A Song That I Like. Yeah. And in it, let me explain. Go on, go on. What I do is, in it, I play a song. What, um, that you like or? That I like. Oh, right. Yeah. So you just pick a few, oh, well, hmm, let me go, I'm going to explain this. All the songs, right, there are, Carl. Steve likes some of them, he doesn't like others. Exactly. But for this particular feature, the only songs that will be in this section will be the ones that he likes. If you think you're going to hear songs that I don't like, you're wrong. <laughs> let me clear that up straight away. Yeah. Songs that I like. What song have you chosen to play? Thank you very much for asking. I have chosen, and it's something I've only been introduced to recently, but I did enjoy it, and it seemed, um, you know, c just felt contemporary. It's uh, pa Patti Smith and the classic... Oh, Korean. fantastic. Play it, Carl. Gloria by Patti Smith. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I love it. It's I've, 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 I've always been one of my favourite tracks. 
And as Carl pointed out, sounds remarkably like, uh, who did you mention? PJ, PJ Harvey. Harvey. Oh, yeah, well, well, yeah, everyone knew that. That's that's she was obviously very influenced by her. Well, that's fine, that's fine. That's all right, yeah. that's allowed. That's, that's cool. I like PJ Harvey too. Exactly. There's enough room for two. You're absolutely right. <sighs> Oh, here we let's are. Just, let's just take a moment to think about what we've done. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been good. It's, yeah, uh, we've enjoyed it's, it's an hour and twenty minutes. We've 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 talked about um, oh shit in the south. We talked about pasties. We've done, done pasties. We've done pasties. A, a number of pastries actually. Um, we did never got the. Um, we should learn a competition. Who's the who's the um, tastiest cartoon ever? Well, actually, I threw up G Terra. I threw up um, Jessica Rabbit. I've had some people contribute here on, Go on. email. Um, we've got someone here. Dom has uh, emailed us. He's told us that uh, for him, Daphne from Scooby Doo. Yeah, popular, popular choice. Popular and choice. obviously, this is one I've uh, I've never quite understood. Wilma from the Flintstones. <laughs> I've actually always felt that Wilma. I don't know. I just thought she was a bit. No, not a bit Wilma. Hungry. Betty, surely. Yeah, yeah, Betty. Well, this is what I'm here. Wilma. I mean, yeah, Betty, surely. But Wilma. No, no I mean, she's quite homely. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, oh, yeah, come yeah. on, Steve. You wouldn't say no to Wilma. No, I suppose not. If it was, I'd, well, if, I'd be worried about Fred if he <laughs> found out. <laughs> well, I'd hate to do it, you know. I don't want to do it to Fred. He's a good guy. He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's a bit of a jump. Whereas, where, whereas Barney, to be honest, I don't yeah. think he deserves Betty. Do they both work in the quarry? <laughs> <laughs> because. I mean, let's be honest, Fred, not a smart man. Like, I mean, he obviously uh, didn't come out of, uh, of rock school with anything other than a couple of basic O-levels. I know, but he's a hard, he's, he's, you know, he's a hard-working sound sort of but guy. they got a big house, they got, like, a TV, they got that bird thing. Yeah. They I mean, I, I, be honest, if I was Fred, I would be a little bit disappointed that my kid does nothing, whereas Barnes can lift up, sort of, tall buildings. Sure. Bam, bam. He's yeah, a very yeah. strong... You know. I mean, interestingly, um, <laughs> Fred loves his job. He's always yabba dabba doing at the end of the day. <laughs> he does he yabba dabba. the whole day lifting rocks from one place to the next. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't take that from that cat, though. <laughs> I would. If a cat picked me up by the scruff neck and put me out, yeah. right, on the doorstep, oh, I'd right. go mental, I'd get rid of it. Get it rid is of a saber toothed tiger, though, Carl, so it could rip him to shreds. It's not like a normal domestic cat you have nowadays. You know when they go to the drive in? At the beginning. Yeah. And they order um, maybe some ribs. Yeah, that huge, that huge rib. And it tips yeah. the car over. Yeah. Was that her first day on the job? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it's I've got... never been ordered before. Yeah, well, either I either thought or... she'd have realised or, that. Or, yeah, we're out of pig. We, we've got brontosaurus rib. Exactly. Because won't that knock the car over? <laughs> no, it won't. I don't know. Rick, can I tell you now? That was an accident waiting to happen. It was really, wasn't it? Yeah. And it did. Oh, dear. Mind you, I, had a, I went in te to Texas once, and I had some ribs, and it was like the Finstones. It was huge. And not only did it look too much like an animal that I couldn't actually eat it, I don't know who could eat it. I mean, seriously, it was two foot long, yeah. and all the rib it was like half a rib cage. And I it is just incredible. My friends were lived in Texas for a while, and they uh, they once were in a kind of diner, and there was um you know those kind of benches that are attached to the table the yeah. itself, like a kind of picnic bench. Yeah. And uh, this huge fat guy came in, he came wobbling. He ordered like this kind of everything you can eat meal, and his fat kind of sort of you know kind of his uh, big fatty fatty fat, and his fatted exactly. on the fat table. It, yeah. ra it, it wrapped itself round the uh, table and everything. Oh, he was God. chowing down, and when he tried to leave, the table came up with him. Oh no! Imagine that. I mean, they are fat, aren't they? They're big people. They're huge people. But it was that thing we were talking about before, that um, uh, bloke on Jerry Springer stone, who was like 80 stone, right? Mm. Now, I felt quite sorry for him. He was really sad and he was crying. It is rad, but my point is this, right? When he got to, say, 50 stones, sure. didn't he go, that's too much that's gonna be enough for it? For a land animal, <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. that's big, isn't it? I mean, I, I I'm getting worried. I'm 13 stone, and I am genuinely getting worried. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. God. When you've got that big, when you've actually got your own mare, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When <laughs> yeah, you have, time. when you have to get in helpers to to w look what the scale says, yeah. Like they, four or five people lift up your belly and go, it's 52 stone. You go, that's too much. <laughs> exactly. That's too, I'm going to only have. Nine breakfasts When you actually, today. when you begin to appear on the Ordnance Survey map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. When You've you got your own symbol. It's yeah. like, we can see two things from space now, Fatty and Steve Merchant. <laughs> we'll be landing right, right about. Well, no, I'm just saying, you're yeah. not fat, aren't you? You're freakish and big. Just another quick thought. They, someone's mentioned Daphne from Scooby-Doo, and I've, yeah. but I've always had a soft spot for Velma. Velma. Because Velma's oh, no. glasses. I mean, I'd have... I'd have She's had clever. Can I tell you what would have happened if I was in that environment? I was maybe on the... Mission Your mission. glasses would have got tangled no, up. No, I'd have always had an... I'd always been making a play for Daphne, right? And I... Velma would have fancied me, but yeah. I'd have always ignored it because I was playing for Daphne. And then when I finally realised it was never going to happen with Daphne, I'd have blown it with Velma. Maybe That's not, though. Maybe not. Maybe not. It, 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 sometimes those, you know, they, they might, you know, appreciate honesty and go, listen, I've been hitting on the good-looking one. <laughs> Oi, four eyes. Yeah. Do you fancy it, Chubbs? <laughs> exactly. Something like that. Just being honest is what you're saying. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, I don't mean to be libelous, but Velma, 
She was quite short, the glasses, the short hair. Lesbian. Hung around with the dog and Lesbian. the bloke. I'm beginning to wonder if she yeah. was me I, I thought, see, unfortunately I said lesbian there and you still carried on with your assessment of what it is to be a lesbian. It's bad enough doing the cliches of having short hair, but you said the dog. Yeah, well she hangs around with a dog. Do, do lesbians do that? Well, have you seen some uh, lesbians? They're right dogs. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I've done there? You know what I've done there, Rick? Comedy oh, award God. winning. <laughs> professional. I was having a cup of tea. Hundred reasons now on XFM 104.9. Just gone half two. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. Hi. All right. Rick, we've get, got a couple of emails in here, and they're saying they enjoyed your performance over the Christmas period on a program called A uh, Hundred Greatest TV Moments. Yeah. Did you do an interview or something? What was the deal? I, I didn't see this. Uh, yeah, the w office was in there, wasn't it? And I was right. interviewed for it. But what are they talking about? With your, they enjoyed your performance. <laughs> Come on, tell me you what know, it, do you? No, I don't. it's the thing that I did on Razzmatazz. Oh, is this uh, where they found a clip? Or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, I, I was in a band and we had one single out or something, and I did one TV appearance when I was about oh god, and they showed a bit of it about seven seconds me on Razzmatazz. <laughs> oh god, Razzmatazz. For with, those that don't remember, with, was like a kind of I suppose what was it like a kind kids. of CD UK of its time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, oh god, and it was yeah, it was the, of the time sort of new romantic and, and I, they showed a clip of this i looked about 10 and about five stone with hair and makeup and girly clothes my sister actually said i look like posh spice <laughs> Brilliant. which is there's a funny story about that, right? because we were rushed and we had to do this thing and we were, um oh god and we were meant to take a flight to newcastle and the, where were you traveling from london uh, yeah but we we got there and we didn't have tickets we were told we were there, but the a and r man overslept Right, for the record company, overslept and it was terrible and we were fretting and eventually it was too late to get the plane, we missed the plane, we had to get a train and it was really kind of fine, they were back and forth going, yeah, if they come now we can still do it, we're going to miss it and this was like a big promotional thing and we got there and they went, I, I oh, <laughs> God, right? And I had this sort of like jumpsuit I was wearing that I'd cut off, put that on backwards. <laughs> a jumpsuit? Uh, yeah, Brilliant. I know, it was, Is it this was what bad. Is yeah. uh, I had that on back to front and there was no time, and I think I even mime wrong at one point, and it was awful. But the funny story is this, that when <laughs> we were there, we didn't have our tickets. This was at the airport. We bumped into Buck's Fizz. <laughs> the, 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 the guys and girls from Buck's Fizz and their manager, so there's like five of them, right, and there's two of us, and they had five tickets, and, this, and Buck's Fizz tried to smuggle us through. <laughs> and so, so they went through the things, right, and they went, tickets please, and he just waved five tickets that he had, like that, goes, this is us, right, and they went, well, can I have a look at them, and they went, there's only five here, and they went, they just looked at us and went, sorry lads, we tried. We tried, we were try we were nearly oh. smuggled through. By Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Carol. They couldn't even, even with their powers, they were the height of their powers. that was like, was that really, that was they'd like a make believe time. They'd already, yeah, they'd already done making your mind <laughs> up. I thought if anyone can get us through customs check, it was the fizz. But even the fizz what I like could though, not get us through. That reassures me, I have to say, about kind of airplane travel. You yeah. know, with these kind of troubled times, it's yeah. nice to know that even What's someone that? like Bucks Fizz yeah. couldn't get, you know, smuggle someone through. That's good, because even, you know, the t top security man went, hold on. There's five in the fizz. <laughs> yeah. There's five tickets. Those two lads are not going through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that makes you more secure about Definitely. air travel now. Well, it's lovely if I'm in America, you know, and I see five star. Yeah, you know, yeah. Trying to get through customs with two yeah. other lads. Exactly. Exactly. I think. Wait a minute. What's going on there? Yeah. Wait a minute. Security guy stopped him. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. You know, there's only meant five in five star. Oh. It's lovely. It's lovely to know that. Yeah. I love the fact. And did you did you know the fizz previously? Of course your first not. Running with the fizz. No, they were they were doing um they were doing uh. The Taz, same as us. They <laughs> were doing the old Raz, same and as did us. They, did you recognise the Fizz and go, oh my god, that's the Fizz, let's try and sneak in with them, or did they recognise you? How did it work? They wouldn't have recognised that. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Would you, I love the, the audacity of going up to Buck's Fizz and saying, try and smuggle us in. <laughs> Can you try and break aviation law for us? Now, <laughs> yeah. Now it's time to make your mind up. We're going to the land of make believe. I did that and they laughed. They went yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you through, lads. Yeah. Just stay tight. Um, I, I was actually uh, on top of Bobby's shoulders in a long coat. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, but Bill. Well, seriously though, I don't understand how what their plan was to. Th th like they would have gone, yep, yeah, through. <laughs> it's the fizz, let them through. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, don't bother checking the. It's like it not wasn't even answering. We couldn't even get to Newcastle. Do you Getting think he was wearing your jumpsuit backwards? That sort of gave it away. 
Well, no, but see, I didn't have it on then. I was, uh, I was just in civvies. I just had jeans and a t-shirt then. <laughs> I didn't even have my hair gelled. I was just wow. like cash. I then. saw it. I thought it looked all right. Did you? Did you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, for. Then you. Yeah. Cheekbones. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had some cheekbones. Yeah. yeah. That was the, That was. If anyone difference. else saw it, or maybe they tell no, it, and they've got a clip, because I'd love to see it. I missed it. Well, let's. I'll get you one. Slide if you have it, put it. I tell you what. Why not create a website? Um, and put that clip on there, on a constant loop, and then send the address in and I'll give it out and people can check it out for themselves. Yeah, right? brilliant. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. I'll have to lose weight now. Yeah. That film. Oh, now we come to the feature. We've, we're carrying this over 2002 because it was such a great success. Everyone's l talking about it. I, do you remember I stopped my film reviews because I'm only doing films I like and I've done all the films I like. That's where other film reviewers fail. <laughs> sure. Because they review for substandard films. <laughs> exactly. My average is still nine and a half out of ten. Yeah. And <laughs> no one's beaten that. Not Barry Norman, not Jonathan Ross. No one's got an average of nine and a half out of ten That's for the true. films they reviewed. So I'm keeping it there. I don't want to drop my standards. Mm. However, that film sounds good. This is where I pick a classic track from a film that I might not have seen, right? But I like the song. I might go and see the film. This is um, almost famous. The film was almost famous. Not I haven't seen film. it. I haven't seen it, right? But a song. Now, don't panic. Listen without prejudice. This is Elton John, but it's when he was good, okay? When he was a bright, funky, young Brit glam star. Wonderful song. Wonderful tune. Wonderful lyrics. It's Tiny Dancer. Love Burns, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club there, Steve. What's about it? That's it, isn't it? We've it's had some country. laughs, haven't we? We've learned as well. We've been educated as ever. Yeah, past ears, all that, that. We've got baguette information. We've had features such as That Film Sounds Good. Exactly. Song, song that I like. Song for the Lovers. Song for the Ladies. Song for the Ladies coming up very shortly. Rick, I was lucky enough this week to go to an exclusive press preview of Britney Spears' forthcoming movie, Criss Cross, or yeah. Crossroads. Crossroads, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's not related to the popular TV show. Right. Rick, I sh I'm assuming you'd, you'd love me to do a little review of it now. I can't, because it's no, embargoed until March. I can only talk about it no. in March. No, Otherwise, I wouldn't, no. the press people will go crazy. No, I don't, I, I wouldn't want you to. Well, no. no, I imagine you want to know all about Crossroads. Not really. Because I cannot tell you anything. Well, don't then, I mean, just... Well, well no, you can on. ask me questions, you can pump me for information, I cannot tell you anything about it until March. I would pump you for no reason ever. No, but really... Certainly not for information. Carl. It doesn't matter what you ask me about Britney Spears <laughs> Crossroads, I cannot tell you anything about it. Right. Okay? Okay. But seriously, if you want to know the plot or what I think of it, I cannot discuss it. <laughs> okay? And if the listeners want to email in questions, they can, I cannot reply. Okay. Until March. So, hang on for that. I've seen the film already. <laughs> I've already seen the film myself. <laughs> in advance of everyone else, yeah. I can't tell anyone about it. Right. Until March. That's the kind of excuse. I'll tell you what, though. Gone. Maybe I'll review it in March. No, you can't. Why? Because you haven't seen it, and I have. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to ask me, qu ask me a question now about it. Well, no. that's you in March. Yeah, Not but if you wanted to know now, you couldn't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> right. Song for the lovers. Yeah. <laughs> ladies, anyway, sorry. Song for the ladies this week. Um, I was lucky enough to um, get given as a Christmas gift the uh, Rolling Stones complete singles collection. Good and present. I, Good what else is an absolute joy? And I was f I'd forgotten how brilliant Wild Horses. Oh, great is, track. Uh, from the Stones. So I thought I'd play that this week for the ladies. Let's leave them with that. Jagger and Richards at their best. Beautiful. Watts is in on it. <laughs> if I, if I know Watts, I, I mean, Wyman was still <laughs> there those days. See you next time. XFM 104.9, kicking off there with a Dandy Warhol, Steve. Sure. The Ricky Gervais Show, with, with me, Steve. Steve Merchant. Well, they always let me say that. Well, oh, I thought you would... What? Well, Five past one, isn't it? Already an error has occurred. Yeah, it's a shame, yeah. It could have been slick. But Steve, we've got some great music. I've uh, been on a bit of a soul tip this week, Are to be honest. Really? Yeah, I was oh, a bit yeah. of a folky last week, but mm. you know, you got stuff from like uh, you know early early Bowie, some Stevie Wonder, sure. a little bit of Groove Armado. We've got the, we've got the classics. We've got Coldplay. We've got Blur. We've got Ash. Sure, sure. We haven't planned anything for the show. I got nothing of you. You're no, just, just reading the list of songs, list of songs that I'm thinking I might that play. will fill up some time. Oh, no. Anything interesting happened to you over the week? Um. Nope. No, I just swore off air, and yeah. Carl went, never swear in an on-air studio. <laughs> I love it when Carl tries to sound like he, he's professional and understands the business. Yeah. You don't fool us, Carl. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Oh. I wish I could buy, I wish I could buy, like, a car, you know, like, those Garfields you can stick on a car window? Oh, yeah. I reckon they should be, we should be able to get a car like that, that we could send out as a gift to people. That'd be lovely, wouldn't Just it? Just his little face, pressed up against the glass, like a window licker. Yeah, like, a, you'd have to lick his face to stick it there. Yeah, that'd be a joy. Oh, oh bless, bless him. him. Or one of those things you throw out a window and it sort of, like, flaps down, you say, they sell them for a quid. <laughs> <on the laughs> yeah, exactly. What, or those called, little dancing Baby cars. pigeons. That's what we used yes. to use. Or frogs sure. from the pond. Sure, yeah. That's cruelty to animals, and I don't condone that, and it was a joke before the RSPCA phone in and say, stop throwing frogs at windows. Well, people um, who are listening... Uh, I don't mean the French, by the way. That, is, that sounds like xenophobic before the, b someone calls in and says, stop throwing French people at windows. Yeah. So I'm digging myself into a yeah. hole here, aren't I? Yeah. It's all gone horribly wrong. Quick, moment. mention the Germans and then this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't mind the Germans. No, good. Um, Carl... Uh, I was just saying, I wonder if people know what Carl looks like in the in the wide world. Is there any reason why they should have you ever it's featured on anything? Or? He's like Moby, he looks like Moby. He does look like Moby, yeah. That's what yeah. He does. does that help? Is that a compliment? A sort of a Moby who's... Mank. Had a bit of a tough paper round when he was younger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. a bit more knackered than Moby. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. See, I, I, I think Moby's great. He's one of those people, whenever he opens his mouth, I sort of like, oh, I'd love to be mates with him. He talks sense, he's interesting, he's lovely. I don't like his records. Mm. There's nothing I can do about that. If I ever meet, if I ever come top mates with him, and after about a few years of us like driving around and having a bite, I go, oh, you know, I'll go, Moby, I've never liked anything you've ever done. Mm. Is I that what you do with your mates? Just drive round. <laughs> What are you, 16? I've never. <laughs> go, I've never go, done go, that. Go to a car park and just do handbrake <laughs> Never. Through. I haven't done that since I was like 17 when like it was great to <laughs> sort of someone had a car. You couldn't believe that you were just moving. I remember it? once, right, my mate, um, uh, Bob, had a car and there was me and another friend in it and uh, we were young, we were about sort of 18, and uh, he did a U-turn when he shouldn't and, a, and this um, motorbike hit him and came off and the music it was just got turning music down. It was really, really bad, right? And he was there and he was really worried and the motorbike bloke was dazed and he went, Are you okay, I'm really sorry and the bloke said, Yeah and I put my head out the window and went, Sorry about that mate. That's the third one today. <laughs> and this motorbike just looked at him and he went, No, don't do that, Gervais. why did you do that? Why'd you say that? I just thought it'd be funny. I didn't really understand the yeah, uh, you know, the yeah. severity of this. Have so I what? told on the radio before about that time when I when I just passed my test and I was driving my parents Volvo estate? And we yeah. went off driving down some country lanes. Have I is mentioned Is this the one with the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've told you, have I? Yeah. Have I told oh, you, Carl? No, no, well, maybe I'll tell you a bit oh, later on. Oh, let's play a record. Yeah, play a record. There's, there's, there's a great anecdote about yeah. a Volvo estate coming up. <laughs> exactly. That's the kind of stuff you're getting on XFM this Saturday afternoon. Do you want some Coldplay or what? Oh, I'd love to. Coldplay. Don't panic. <laughs> oh. That's the title of the song as well as what I was saying. <laughs> In fact, I was just saying the title of the song, yeah. if I'm being honest, making it sound like it was Conversation, that, yeah. XFM 104.9. Uh, it's the Ricky Gervais Show, with Steve Merchant. Thanks. Um, you were going to tell us a little story about just a Volvo Estate. Just passed my test. Yeah. My parents had a big, big Volvo Estate, and it's quite a big oh, car to drive. drive. My parents didn't have a car. <laughs> but if you, I know you don't drive cars, Rick, but yeah. it's quite a big car to drive if you've just passed your test. It's safe though, isn't it? It Apparently. is very safe, that was the thing. Yeah. And uh, I live, come from uh, the West Country, obviously, there's quite a lot of windy lanes. No, there. you're joking, <laughs> do you? They have cars there. <laughs> well, here he comes. <laughs> Blimey, Carl. Learned on a tractor, automatic it was. Do you want me to tell it or not? Oh! Don't, don't <laughs> give up the accent! Oh no, I've got a whistle. Go on. Oh. oh. Go on. So I went to this party. You have a go at being from the north. Not when he's telling an anecdote. He's never telling an anecdote. Oh yeah, fair point. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, so I went to a party and I was quite excited because I had the car, I had the motor, and there was a chick heading down to the party that I was like, you know, I had my eye on. And yeah. I thought, you know, now I've got a car and uh, going to the party, it's going to be amazing, right? <laughs> and side, various, various friends had said, like, can we get a lift? I thought, yeah, groovy. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, pick yeah, up yeah. the chick as well, who's yeah, a friend yeah, of a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cruising down to the party in the motor, you know, the Volvo estate, and there's nothing sexier than that. You know, slipping a little bit of uh, Billy Joel on the uh, stereo or whatever. Oh, you know, something the classy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um,. Uh, maybe it was uh, Billy Ocean. Oh, I, I, had a, I was quite a Billy. Maybe it was Billy get out of my dreams, get into my car. Ideally, yeah. So I get to the party, and uh, inevitably it was one of those house parties where the, the chick that I had my eye on, uh, she kind of was chatting to other guys, and she wasn't really paying attention to me, and I, and I was, I was sort of saying how to get was she again? <laughs> oh, oh, same so, old story. Oh, they make me laugh. They know how to tease, don't they, 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 the ladies? Oh, who are they kidding? Oh. <laughs> 
So uh, I'd follow her like her dog, you know, from room to room. Yeah. And uh, watch Quite her Quite literally, sometimes he was barking. Yeah. To to go and on. while, uh, you know, just watch her while she talked to other blokes. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously I wasn't, because I, I was driving, I wasn't drinking, so I was not really enjoying myself. And then somebody said, should we go and pick up Vera? And I thought, right, okay. And they went, Steve's got a car, let's all leap in there, we'll go pick up Vera. Mm. And this girl was like up for it as well, so I thought, brilliant, you know, I'll be back in the car with her, you know, away yeah, from yeah, all these, yeah, uh, these yeah, lads. Yeah, yeah. One guy she had her eye on, he came as well, I was a little bit annoyed. Yeah. But anyway, he was in the car, so I'm driving down these country lanes, just driving along, and they're directing me, they're saying, go left here, go right. And then suddenly, we stop, and um, he goes, one of them goes, uh, just drive into that field, this pitch black field, right? And I'm sort of, well, it is my parents' car. Just drive in the field, Steve. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to, like, not seem like I'm a hard, cool, crazy kind of guy, because the chick's in the car. So I drove the car into the field, they all leapt out, started running off into the darkness, shouting, Vera, 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 where are you? So I'm just sort of sat there in the car, waiting. Wasn't well, Vera Lynn, was it? Because she likes to hide in fields. <laughs> Bizarrely, it wasn't. Right. It was just, I was just left in the car uh, on my own with uh, Billy Ocean and uh, suddenly out of the darkness they come back holding a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig that they had stole from a, no, uh, a nearby farm stole and they knew, that, they knew that the pig uh, was called Vera because someone knew the farmer or something. Anyway, so they got this pig so now they're going, I'll oh, put the pig in the back of the car, we'll take it back to the party, it'll be hilarious. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not sure I want a pig and all its, you know, piggy crap in the car, right, crammed in there but they say, yeah, so obviously I'm thinking again I don't want to look like I'm, you know, a nerd. You know, I'm terrified of that, Rick, ever happened. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah. So, uh... So you go, hey, bring the pig into the car. <laughs> exactly. I'm exactly. no nerd. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, go on. Um, so now we drive off again. I've got this pig kind of squeaking in the back of the car. And, uh, they say, stop again, stop again. Let's do some cow tipping. And they do that old thing, you know, about the fact we... Because cows sleep standing up, don't they? So you, you can push a cow over and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a wild time. Hilarious. So this time, uh, now we get to a sort of dead end in the, in the road. And, uh, they say, well, turn around. Let's go back to the party. And I'm thinking, fine. Try and do a three-point turn in this very narrow country lane, right? Get the Volvo estate wedged horizontally across the road. Can't get it out. Just can't seem to sort it out. I don't know what. I'm just... I'm now I'm panicking because there's a pig in the car. Right? And, uh, local disgruntled farmers, right? People drunk, partying, probably off their head on some kind of weed, really. Was it, was it loads of blokes with, like, pitchforks and flaming torches <laughs> exactly. going, burn him. He's playing with our pig. Exactly that. And, uh, and so that, do you know, I was so terrified that my, well, all I could think was they're gonna have to send a helicopter yeah. to lower a magnet onto the top of the car to lift the car up and put it r the right way around. You used to re what, read a lot of comics, didn't you? Yeah. 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 So, uh, do you know what I started doing? What? Crying. Did you really? Yeah. Why? So started crying, just very slightly, started getting upset, and the the other guy that the girl fancied, he had to get into the driving seat and sort it out for me by oh slowly no. edging forward so and backwards. that's the worst bit of the whole story. Yeah, edging slowly back and forwards, he just sorted it out, just slowly, 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 slowly worked the car back round, and then we were off. You were just gently weeping. Just gently weeping in the, the back. the bloke had just taken the bird that you saw from a distance. <laughs> exactly. That was basically your wife in your head by then. <laughs> oh yes. Wasn't it? I can't we believe it. We were happily married with a pig for a child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. joke, that could happen. I know. <laughs> um, Do, um, the pigs come, if you like. Sorry? <laughs> what? what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> when you do what, Carl? What? What? <laughs> what? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, what did you say? Because I don't want to have to go to the radio authority again. You're what did you say then? <laughs> just remember, just remember, just We remember. are going out live, Carl. Yeah, remember Tom Bins, right? What did you say? <laughs> what I'm saying is, why were they shouting Vera? Because pigs don't come to the name, <laughs> do they? Hey? You I know, don't know the ins and outs of a p of pig, you know, how to lure a pig into your trap. Can I just tell you some very, very interesting things about pigs? Please do. Right. One, they have, a, everyone knows they have a corkscrew so like penis. Right? Yeah, a corkscrew shaped yeah. penis. Yeah. That's yeah. the tail, isn't it? Two, yeah. they can't look up. They can't put their head back and look up. Right? Three, yeah. they can have a 30 minute orgasm. Yeah. Rick, is it only pigs that have got a corkscrew shaped penis? <laughs> no, and landlords. <laughs> okay. Very handy. Right. Here's, um, here's one for you. Go on. You like insect facts and stuff. Go on. Um, if mm. a man was a flea... He could jump over St Paul's Cathedral. No. What? Wrong. It's gone up now. It's... <laughs> The big wheel. <laughs> the big wheel. It's the millennium gone up wheel. Now. It's gone up now. Play a record. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ash, there's a star on XFM 104.9. Now, Steve. Yes. Carl text messaged me in the week, very excited, because he just watched a programme. 
that proved me and you were stupid. Remember when we, we, um, we sort of championed the anti-supernatural? Yes. We, skeptical view. We, we're just absolutely skeptical. Like, things like that. Um, um, we're, we're atheists. We don't believe in ghosts. Anything like that. Anything supernatural. We're, we're very, we're, we're followers of James Randi, a, a genius of our times, but Carl, saw something that proved us wrong. I'd like Carl to tell you what this proof was, what he saw on, and, uh, look at him. Go on then. It was on, it was on Wednesday night. Yeah. I was watching, I, you see, the problem is I didn't get the full story, so you could pick holes out of it. Sure, 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 sure. And, and like your usual investigations <laughs> into the supernatural. <laughs> Which are It was called, can I just say what the programme's called? Mr. Exorcist. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> So <laughs> Sounds bit, like an academic work to me. Yes. The bit that I caught, I, I just flicked it over, uh, uh, sort of seeing what's on the telly, and I thought, oh, Exorcist, I've seen it, but there's nothing else, and I watch it, and then I realised it wasn't the same thing. Yeah. Thought, oh, I'll, I'll have a bit of this. And um, there was an old woman and, and a daughter, and as far as I, I was aware, the, the bit I picked up on, they were saying, oh, you know, it's, it's dreadful, and, unless you've been through it, you know, you've had ghosts in your house and that, you really don't know what it's like. Yeah, sure. And the main thing that seemed to be getting them down was the fact that the budgie was getting stressed. The budgie was getting stressed? Because animals can sense the, the other side, can't oh, okay. they? Can they? Yeah. Okay. So, um... And how was that manifesting itself? You don't know. What was the budgie doing? I think it, it, it just wasn't happy. Right. <laughs> did it, did it, did it explain that to people, or no, how did know, it express I mean, that? No, budgies are known for being chirpy, aren't they? I see, and it wasn't chirpy. It, it, well, it, you know, it normally swings on its little... Perch and that, and just depressed because it was right. possessed. It was yeah. just sat around in its uh, in its pajamas. <laughs> so, so <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Come on, so Steve. Yeah, Come on, Steve. You're making this a mockery. So <laughs> the budget was depressed because he could sense the ghost. Yeah, and yeah. then so yeah. this yeah. Um, yeah. this guy, yeah. this Mister uh, Exorcist, came yeah. round. Was that his name? Yeah. Okay. Was he a, was he a, a priest or something? Yeah, he might have been. Yeah. Like I did he, did he have a, did he have a, like a black coat with a little white collar? Yeah. That's, that's usually the... He had his coat on, so you couldn't tell. No, I'm sure. Okay. But, so he, he came round and he sort of did his thing. Yeah. And, um, and then... And was the he trying, was he trying, was he trying to exercise the budgie? Uh, no, no, the, the, the ghost. House. Right, the so, house, so he yeah, wasn't that the budgie had a demon or anything. No. Out. Okay. No, so this wasn't a possession, was it? This was a straightforward, it wasn't a poltergeist or anything, it was a, just a... Well, it's a haunted house. Yeah. Yeah, but sure. th that's the thing he was saying. He was saying you can have, like, your ghouls and that, that aren't that bad, that aren't going to cause you any yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, But obviously yeah, yeah. The, the budgie, they've, they've got weak hearts and that, haven't they? <laughs> and <laughs> sure. I so, so he, go on, so, 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 so anyway, basically, he sorted it out, did whatever he did, and uh, the next shot you see is, like, the budgie making a noise and swinging it's it over the moon again, and the, the old woman was, like, happy, because she was She couldn't stressed. believe it, yeah. And that's Does it. the priest didn't come in and go, well... You should feed that bird. <laughs> Give it a bit of millet. It, it was happy. It goes right. No, See you later. No, it was a. So it's budge, I mean, budgies are. Um, my mum's got a budgie, and they, they, you know, they're fairly happy all the time, aren't they? So it's got to be something fairly yeah. odd. Right. You never see a budgie sitting down going. I feel like topping myself, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean, though? No. Do you know no. you can have, like, moody, uh, a moody dog? You can you can see a dog when it's unhappy if it's walking yeah. down the street. You can have a moody canary, can't you? And what they do is they often tell the police what you've been doing. They're known for that. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, basically... So that, for you, is proof that the supernatural exists. A bird in a cage got a little bit annoyed, <laughs> wasn't chirping as much as it normally did. Who knows why? There could have been a little draft up its... <laughs> You know, and uh, oh, like <laughs> exactly. That's anyway, a medical term. Anyway, a man just... came in and did whatever he did. Yeah. Yeah. Your Mr. Exorcist, though, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't, it, this wasn't any bloke off the street. This was Mr. Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. So and for you, that's the proof that there is. Um... Just because, like, if it was a, a person, you go, oh, they, they're playing up for the camera. Yeah, you know, a they'd... budgie could possibly act like that, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. You say you're saying a budgie would not be trying to. It wouldn't be trying to become famous. No, or no not like telly. not like Lassie. No, sure. It was sure. basically a show off. Yeah, or so, champion the Wonder Horse. So yeah. What do you think? Um, I think... I've changed, well, I've changed my tune, Rick, I don't uh, know about you. I have, and I think we should play a record. I'd love to get Mr. Exorcist in. Wouldn't that be amazing? Never dabble with things you don't understand. Sorry. Like women. See what I did there? <laughs> He's turned that back on me. Blur. Boys and girls. Girls and boys. Embarrassed yourself. Blur. Girls and boys there, Steve on XFM 104.9. So, uh, it's not so, so bad, really, because we didn't plan the thing, you know. No, we've, no. Uh, we've, we've proved the supernatural. We were wrong about that. Well, I just, just one other question. Was there anything else in this woman's house that 
led her to believe that there were ghosts, or was it just the fact that, you know, Tweety, or whatever his name was, wasn't chirping? You see, this is the problem. I was watching, um, UK Style, I was watching something on that. What were you watching on that? It was, do you know, it's not changing rooms, it's like that, but cheaper. You, you, uh, quite seriously, right, you might be the most interesting man in the world. I, I'm fascinated by it. I'd like to follow you, I'd like to have a hidden camera on you, I'd, I can ask you any question. You know, it's, I'd like to have you in a cupboard in my flat, so I'm going, I just think about it, I, go, I wonder what Carl thinks of that, and I'd just throw some at you, and you'd, you know what I mean? It's because that's what my dad did. <laughs> just kept me in the cupboard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Yeah. I, just, like, I wonder what Carl would You're think never stuck for a conversation point if Carl's around. That's no, what's genius about it. He's him. always got an opinion. He's got an opinion about everything. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> I love the fact he was watching UK style without a shadow of irony. Yeah. Nothing. No, that's, that's, what, cool. no, that's what I like about him. Exactly. That's what's I wouldn't brilliant. like it if he was trying to be no, 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 he's not. kitsch yeah. and stuff like that. I, I like it because he's down the line, straightforward, no nonsense. Yeah. This is what I like. You know what I mean? He's going to be, he's going to be sort of like Jeffrey Boycott, Dickie Bird when he's yeah. about like 60 or 70. He's going to get on a bus and go to the, um, the driver somewhere, you need an haircut, you look like a scruffy <laughs> get. You know what I mean? He's yeah. going to be a great old bloke that you he, does, he doesn't get chinned in the pub. Yeah. Right? People protect him, you know, because he's like 70 or something. But it, it's great. You're looking forward. You're actually in th that nod. I know that, that nod went. I can't wait to be seventy. Yeah, wasn't it? Mm. I, yeah. Can I can I can I uh, make a suggestion that we just get people? They can email in just questions or comments they'd like to hear from from uh, Carl. Maybe they just want to know his opinion on the Afghanistan itch situation. Yeah, like or you know, like last night's Coronation Street, whatever. Yeah, like they do. You know, um, uh, in the enemy or, or imagine that coming up to the election, they go Billy says Labour. Oh, yeah, Carl. I think the Sun has White Van Man. Each oh, day they yes. interview a guy who drives a white van, sees his opinions on various topics. Carl is very much our white man van. White yeah. man van. Yeah. So any I'm any right. query you have, I think most of our listeners. Any are, opinion to be honest. that you would like to hear voiced from the K man, uh, Ricky Gervais at xfm co uk, or you can phone in. I don't. I forget what the number is. Oh, eight, matter, seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Sweet. Now it's time for our first regular feature of the day. That film sounds good. That film sounds good. good I stopped good. the film reviews because I've done all the films that are nine or yep. ten out of ten. I don't want to yep. drop my standards. Absolutely. Uh, this is a feature where it's a soundtrack of a film where I like a single from it and might make me want to see the film. Might have seen the film. Today is our first request. Right. Interesting. This is uh, for Martin, who wants to hear uh, "Living in the City" by um, uh, Stevie Wonder, Genius. and it's from Jungle Fever. Let's hear it. Well, I, I love the song it's and I love the film. Classic. Living for the City. Genius. Stevie Wonder. The Man's a God. film Jungle Fever. Absolutely. It's a great film. Yeah. Well, not to be confused with Living in the City, which I think is a Desiree track. <laughs> so now never you know, because you're a huge but Desiree fan. We right? were grooving along to that. It's a great, not my favourite Stevie Wonder track. I, I actually, um, for, uh, He's Mr. Nuttall. But right. a, a great track. Oh, oh. Stevie Wonder's just fantastic anyway. And during that, we just uh, heads down, we just like, you know, just enjoying the moment. We said, turn it up, didn't we? We liked it. Yeah. Carl, just halfway through, just halfway through. Just looking at me, he, he's got a driving license. Yep. I went, what? He went, he's got a driving license. I went, I said, he went, yeah, just for his own land. I went, you don't need a driving license for your own land. He went, you might be right. He said, who else is blind? <laughs> I remember hearing something. I, it, it was someone famous right. who, who shouldn't have a driving license. Well, and they have. And I'm sure a lot of people. Someone who's, I'm sure it was someone who was blind. But you're right, it's a bit of an odd one. It is, isn't it? <laughs> no, but don't, don't forget, don't forget, you haven't just, this hasn't just happened, this is in your head. So you can't say that and go, isn't that weird, how did that happen? It's in your head, don't forget, at the moment. There is no proof There's of no this. There's no proof of that. You can't say something and they go, isn't that strange? You said it. Oh. Do you know what I mean? We didn't just see something happen out the window. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Mm. What's in your head and what happened and all that? What are you thinking? I'm just thinking... Who's that other fella? Um, Ray, Charles. Ray Charles. Yeah. Well, why would he have a driving licence? He's blind as well. I think it's the blind thing we've got a problem with. <laughs> that, that it's the idea of people who are blind driving cars that's maybe made us yeah. question that. I mean, Stevie may have a driving licence. I very much doubt that he's passed his test. No. He probably hasn't even... I mean, he could have done the theory one, maybe. But that's touchscreen. And until Labradors actually are allowed on the Queen's Highway, exactly. I don't think we're seeing many blind people driving well, I cars. I might be wrong. I you might be, mightn't you? <laughs> oh, we hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Oh. 
Yes, mm. you might be wrong. Could well be well, wrong. Well, there's a start. I fancy a bit of Ed Hardcore about now. <laughs> well, Rick, you've embarrassed yourself because his name's Harcourt. Harcourt. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just play the song, Carl. Let's mop up this ugly mess. Still to come, loads of our other features, of course, including Hip Hop Hooray! Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and Love Burns XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. My name's Steve Merchant. It's Carl, what's your name? I press the buttons. That's it. Carl, I press the buttons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless him. He's people are loving the K Man, aren't they? They are. People are saying they love him. He's just. Oh. He is. He's I amazing. think we've created a whole new Will McDonald. <laughs> I like to think so. Yeah. Carl! Or, or, or Gordon the Gopher. <laughs> I used to have a show in, in Manchester. Did you, you used to host a show? Yeah, overnights. What kind of things was it? What kind of stuff? What sort of, what sort of tip were you on? Phone-ins and stuff. Yeah. yeah you did a phone-in? Not a proper one. What did people phone in about? Just no, they didn't. That was one problem. There was no phones. Go on. No, just, uh, you know, how things were going and that. Problems? Were you like an agony uncle? Mm, kind of. That's amazing. Imagine that. Imagine sending someone to Carl. You got problems? <laughs> Is it delicate? We'll go to Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Hang on. There's, looks like maybe there's some uh, questions. Oh, we got. You know, we've got a few questions here. What's the one? Um, what's Carl's view on? Carl, what do you make of nudism? Who's that let from? Check, let me just check who that's from. Sort of a, there's a time and a place for it. That's from. Uh, it's very difficult to tell. That's great, you see. There's, there's a time and a place for it. That is just brilliant. <laughs> that is Dicky Bird. That's that's that sort of northern uh, confident soundbite. Wasn't it your nudism? Well, time and a place for it. There's time and a place for it. Would you do it, Steve? Would I do nudism? Yeah. He's not allowed. Not, not again. No, no, yeah. uh, it's not, not in, nice, is it, really? No, it's not, with Steve. He, he's not allowed on uh, any National Trust land doing it because mm. he's caused the death of millions of starlings. That's it, true. There was something on BBC Choice the other night. It's a really short show. I haven't seen it before. Um, yeah. like an odd it's not. Thing. It's not a bloke eating cup of soup, and then another short show, like maybe someone cleaning their teeth with Colgate, and then the really short show. What was it called? No, what it was, it was about uh, this old fella who um, he's into nudism, and um, he was saying it, he's done all right. Did he out play of it. volleyball a lot? Yeah, he said it, he's done all right out of it because there's not many blokes who uh, mm -hmm. are willing to go nude for for modelling and that. And he's yeah. about seventy, so it's not. Is there much nice. cry for that, do you think? Is there much demand he's, for a 70 year old right. He's doing all right for it. Sure. Good And, um, you. the odd thing was, you see... He had a corkscrew penis. <laughs> he was, um, <laughs> he was just, like, walking around on the main road in, like, a seaside in the town. And, right. yeah, and cars were... See, that's not nudism, is it? That's <laughs> mental illness. <laughs> yeah, he's just a bit d div. Yeah. 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 So, yeah I tell you, one of your favourite programmes, isn't one of your favourite programmes just that, that one with the hot air balloon? And it's yeah, you love that, don't it just yeah. goes. It's like oh, in you Sydney sometimes. Then it's at a carnival. Oh, your his favourite um, program when he was little. He used to watch it for hours. Was that little girl by a blackboard with two toys? Yeah. He used to love you that. Didn't enjoyed you? that, didn't you? Right. Listen. Here's something else I learned in the week, and we can use this if you want to give away the incubus tickets. Go on. Uh, there's a problem. Oh, I must have. There's some tickets to give away later. I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you what it's later. Go on. Who? Carl. Who, 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 who? I don't know. Yeah. We're gonna we'll save it. It's a okay. surprise. Go on, Carl. Oh, have I ruined it? No, go on. Crack right. on, mate, crack on. Um, yeah. There was a pro program about the, uh, the body. Sure. Um, and wh what is it, right? Barbie doll. Why couldn't that be real? Yes. <laughs> Play a record, Carl. I, I, do, I do know the answer, actually, I have to say. What do you yes. mean, really? why couldn't it be real? If, if the Barbie doll was, like, a real person... Right. ...it wouldn't work out. <laughs> I don't understand the question! <laughs> if you do, this is what worries me. I do understand the question. Why do you understand it? Because it's one of those facts which I've heard in the past, but, so therefore, because I know the answer, the question makes sense. But unless you, unless you know the answer, the question makes no sense. Well, of course it does. That's what's brilliant. Is it worth using for the tickets, do you think? Is it that good? It's not a real question, Carl. I don't that think is. it can count, really. It can't be a real Why? question. Well, b because I, it's like one of those things about, oh, a man went into a field and died. Why? You have to ask questions. You go, oh, because it's probably, you know, but, well, I've got a million explanations. Um, okay, she'd be hollow. Do you know what I mean? There no, are he's right, actually. There is, it is too vague. Why don't you give the answer and then you'll understand what, what your question meant. What was the answer? She'd have to walk around on all fours because... No, physically, the proportions of Barbie yeah. could yeah. not be replicated on a real human woman because she just couldn't have those di dimensions. Yeah, we know. Yeah, but but, but that, that, that you know what I mean. Yeah, same goes for Fred Flintstone. Do you know what I mean? His head's half his body. It's a cartoon. All right. 
Um, Don't have a go at Carl. He's the K man. People love him. Sorry. God, they're going to alienate yourself. I'd like some hip hop, Steve. Seriously. He's laying into I'd like some hip hop, Steve. We'll come up with a question. We're giving away some Incubus tickets later. Look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, it's time for Hip Hop Hooray. Uh, this is hip-hop from. Hooray. Um, <laughs> whoa. Hey. Yeah. Whoa. Hey, this is from Adela Soul's ni- uh, 2000 album, not sure. the current one. Art Official Intelligence, yeah. Mosaic Thump. Yeah, uh, they've changed a bit, haven't they? They have, and a lot of people have dismissed Ella Soul, but there's still some tracks you can dig out Not that are jazzy, good. but this is a soul tip to this, this show, This is a wonderful it? track. Uh, this is With Me. Play it, Carl. A live P.O.D. or pod, <laughs> Absolutely. As, I, as I call them. Yep. On XFM 104.9, a bit of rock. Who are you? I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carl over there. Now listen, there's a bit of rock there. Yep. Takes us into a competition. We've okay. got Incubus tickets to give Incubus, away. Incubus, you say? Now, I like Incubus. Okay. I mean, for, for what they are, but, you know, I'm a bit worried about all this crossover, this new metal, and these people coming out that are a bit like Pearl Jam, and a bit, all oh, this sort of, oh, I'm not too sure about it. Okay. I'm not still not convinced, but Incubus have got a bit of style about them. Uh, well, you know the um, the competition we just ran there, the phone in, ask Carl and thing. People were phoning up. One person said, "What do you think about new metal?" Carl just quick as fast went, "I hate it." <laughs> exactly. And he threw a question right back at them. Went, "Do you listen to that in the morning?" She went, "Yeah." He went, "Wow." Well, you see, in the morning I like Ash. In the evening, I might listen to. Um, I think he said Magic. Magic FM. Yeah. yeah, but I love the fact that he is now. We've we've. Put him on a pedal. He's, he's, he's happy with his own opinions. Before he was like, mm, I don't know. And now he wants to tell the world. He'd be down Hyde Park Corner tomorrow, will not he? And they're going, right, who wants to know what I think <laughs> about, I don't know. Uh... At two o'clock, I will listen <laughs> to the Human League. <laughs> Uh, Today at 4.13, I had one apple and <laughs> listened <laughs> to Primal Scream. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, you're, you're great, bloke, Carl. We better stop now because, you yeah. know, we're going to make you into the new there'll be, there'll be more from Carl next. So this is a very cl- last question that someone... This is Jim. He's emailed in. He says, does Carl think that the wa- that Waterworld, Mad Max, Judge Dredd, or similar films present an accurate portrayal of what a post-apocalyptic world <laughs> might be like? <laughs> How do you imagine what the world will be, Carl, when the, the bomb is dropped? I have got no comment. You've okay. Got no okay. Let's, let's forget the films. What do you think the world might be like if there was, say, a nuclear war and we had to survive underground for a while till all the, um, you know, uh, uh, waste went away and we could come up and we could eat fruit again and oh, there was oh, it was all weird and we had to start from scratch. I'd rather die. <laughs> okay. Okay. Or right. you? Uh, Wouldn't you? Well, supposing it was sort of like, you know, Britain was just, uh, it was, all the buildings had gone, right? Or there was some, some bit of scavenging, there was like, and we hid underground and we came out, you know, sort of, in ten years' time. <laughs> Don't keep shaking your head, you know, the question. You can go, no, 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 <laughs> rather die. <laughs> and it's fine, you lived on tin fruit for a few years, right? Then you had to come up and start again. You had to, and you had to find other civilizations. I'd want that thing that, um, is it, is it Walt Disney had? Sort of. Cryogenically preserved. Put me in a fridge thing and say, look, wake me up when it's all built again. Mm. I couldn't be doing with that, walking around yeah. with a hard hat on all day. Yeah, what would you do? Set an alarm clock? You're, you're <laughs> the only person, what, well, you get in a fridge and even know, if you find this, do not disturb till 2012. <laughs> you know what I mean. No, I, well, yeah, but saying that wasn't, well, I mean, what would you do first? You'd just come out, right, come out into the light, it was just like, it was like, you know, um, S- Saxon Britain, there was nothing, you'd have to start again, what would you do? What would you do first? I'd probably go and see where I live now to see what's left of it. <laughs> I love how he thinks. Oh. Carl, if you if you were the last man on earth, right, yeah. and you had to have one other woman with which to start the human race again, right, yeah. and not your girlfriend, who would you start the human race again with? Which person would you would you want to be? bear in mind? It's not just like the fact that you've got to have kids. You've got to they've got to be able to provide something in this and they, world. And they've got they to be might, leaders. And they might be all melted. And they, they, <laughs> exactly. So and their beauty may have. They've just got one good eye, uh, but now they can tell what you're thinking because <laughs> exactly. of radiation. <laughs> yeah. They and and do you think, and. Carl? They tried to go through a pod, and there was a there was a fish in there for some reason in their Wellington. Ooh. I mean, for me, probably. No, what would you rather kiss, a mermaid or a unicorn? <laughs> Carl, quickly. Mermaid. Why? No, sh- 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 no, no, I want him to answer my question. Because it's got a lady's face. Mm. Okay then, what would you rather kiss, a lady with um, the body of a fish or the body of a horse? A fish. Wouldn't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the best thing in the world. It's just like, you know when you call a file a rude word, and yeah. then the computer goes, do you want to open tits? <laughs> yeah. You laugh, because it's like, that's what playing with Carl's sure. like. It's sort of like you input it, and you always get, you, get, you know what I mean? You yeah. sort of get... You get more back than you bargained for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, probably only because though, because I've seen films that that one with that Hannah Darrell or whatever her name is in, and she looks <laughs> yeah. alright. I've never seen Hannah a film Darryl, yeah. with a woman with a horse's body. Maybe if I've seen one, I'd, I might change my mind. If okay, can, right. can you email us a picture of a woman with a horse's body? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky oh. Gervais at XFM. Or do they do they exist? Anyway, do you reckon unicorns exist, Carl? No. Look, no. let's play another song then, because I think we were going to give away some incubus tickets. We seem to have got sidetracked. Okay. Um, we? Well, I'd like to play. My song for the lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not ashamed of this. It's an early Bowie track. It's his his sort of you know version of soul. It's off the Young Americans album, and it's a beautiful song called "Can You Hear Me." David Bowie, at his best there. Yeah. Young Americans, can you hear me? You, you said it when the record was on, Steve. You're not going to hear this sort of eclectic mix of music anywhere. Anywhere else, Rick. We go from hip-hop to soul, to hip-hop and soul, to soul-y type hip-hop. And then some soul-y hip-hop hop hop hip. And ash. And the joy of it is, Rick, that if people are open-minded enough and broad-minded enough, as yeah. I hope our listeners are, yeah. they're going to be loving this. And we, play, we played early out and last We've week. We didn't sorts. care. Sorry. We don't care what he's done since no. or what he's like now. We're not if someone, reputation. Rick. I don't judge. I don't judge. You know what I mean? If they Rick, do a good track, can then I this now? play that track. I am not interested in what people think's cool. No, obviously. No, I'm interested in what people think is good, Rick. Yeah. Yeah, All yeah. Right. No, I'm interested in what we think is good, I Steve. don't care about what women think is traditionally handsome. No! no. I play by my own rules. Yeah, exactly. You do, don't you? Yes. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. You're not in it for their amusement. I'm not in this game for anyone's amusement. No. Obviously right. not. Jeez, now, all these women with the, oh, you know, I want to be able to have a conversation. Yeah. I want to be able to have an orgasm. Exactly. <laughs> you Hello. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, now, that was, uh... David Bowie there. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've played some great tracks here, but we've got more to come, haven't we? We have indeed, yes. Play more to come, Rick, but we're going to give those Incubus tickets we've away. We've got a competition. Now, we were talking about um, people keeping an open mind. Now, our listeners have got open minds. They're, yeah. they're, they're like, they're not only open, they're blank. Yeah. They're, you know what I mean, yeah. really? Empty canvases. From the Empty ones that have been, yeah, <laughs> yeah. From the ones that have been phoning up, I yeah. don't know how they dialed. No. I think they're wrong numbers or they sat on the phone or something. Sure. Um, and a lot of old listeners are coming back. A lot we, of people from the old days of XM. Yeah. I don't know, they've obviously been allowed out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally. Well, that's care in the community, Rick. Yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. now get thrown out of those homes so or I thought, detox centres. Yeah, I thought maybe an old question, something I'd you know, explored three years ago, what four years ago. What excites me is the fact that, you know, clearly all those kind of needle exchanges mm -hmm. and things like that really helping people stay alive, and that's sure. a joy. Sure, sure, sure. you know, that's, sure. that's evidence there on the phone. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what about this? Now, you know the answer to this, I've done this before. Okay. Right? There is one London station. Wait, we've done this in the last couple of weeks. Oh, you think I'm going to say St John's Wood? Yes. No. Okay. There is one London station that has no vowels. That has no vowels? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. You've not thought this no, through at all. It's one vowel. It's one vowel. It is one vowel. So oh, there's, there's one London station with one vowel? I can't remember the answer, though. <laughs> oh, no, this is pathetic. <laughs> This is so rubbish. <laughs> I so want to be on someone else's show. Like, Camfield would be good, or just on, like, Dr. Fox. <laughs> we like Dr. Fox now, Dr. don't Fox we? Dr. Fox is amazing. We like him. I, I, he's, he's come through on that pop star, pop star tonight. I love Fox. I like, I like his little trunk. He's like, a, he's like a little trunk. And he works out, and he's got a bike and everything, but I like him. He's got, he's optimistic. He wears too much blusher, and he's, I like his suits. But it's I, the fact that he's, it's like, however hard he tries, he just doesn't look right on the telly. He just I looks know, like a man who's been sewn into that suit. I know, I know. Can I tell you when I saw him once riding here into Capital, uh, on his hog, on his Harley? Oh, is that? It's right? such a yeah. joy. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, no, we like Foxy. What about Simon Cowell? Ooh. Ooh. What about that Nicky Chapman? Like her. Yeah, what about the other, who's the other one? Oh, Waterman. Waterman. Up and down, He's Waterman. a bit of a knob. Wow, come on, you can say that, but he's, no, he he's, 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 he's sold millions of records. None of this talking... So is our price. None what? of this talking is disguising the fact that we still not managed to give those incubators okay, away. Okay, 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 what about questions? this? What about this? What about this? 
You've got nothing, have you? No. Running on empty. Yeah. Play a record. <laughs> Hives there on XFM 104.9. Right, we've got a competition question. Steve's come up with it at the last minute. This is just to check if you are a regular listener of the show. Yeah, okay. we would like to reward loyalty. Exactly, absolutely. So, um, last week on the show, Ricky described a story that happened to him uh, back in the 80s when he was making his TV appearance on Razzmatazz with his band. And he tried to, he had to fly out, was it to Newcastle? Yeah. And um, he tried to get on a plane, and a pop act of the 80s tried to help Ricky sneak aboard an aeroplane. But failed. But they failed to do it. At the height of their powers. And they were at the height of their powers. What was the name of that outfit? Should we put them on the line? Absolutely, let's hear well, it. There's, there's the people there already. This is to win Incubus tickets. Please do not be mental. Don't be mental or swear or say anything libelous or nasty. Yep. Just be nice. You won't, you won't win if you're not. Go on. Hello? Yeah. Hi, who's that? Oh, I've got my headphones on, haven't I? Put your headphones on, Rick. I'll just oh. keep her talking. Oh, no. Nice. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Okay, hello. Hi. hello there. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, where are you calling from? Um, Clapham Junction. And do you know the answer? I do. Okay. Is it Bucks Fizz? It was indeed Bucks Fizz. It was the Fizz. <laughs> yeah. It was indeed the Fizz. Well, do then. you like Incubus? Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, you see, if I was interrogating you, <laughs> I, I, I'd go, you hesitated. Yeah. There's so many people phoning up who are desperate for these Incubus tickets. Please don't make they us are give them to you. No, no, to be fair, they're rightfully yours. Right, I'll you... tell you what, why, I'll have a t-shirt if you give them the tickets. Okay, can is we... that just any old t-shirt or... No, no. Can we, uh, can we send you a t-shirt? Carl's nodding. We right, think we can send you a t-shirt. Right, um, we'll get you a t-shirt. How, how, how are you going to do that then, Carl? Because you've got to take her name and everything now. Uh, you keep talking a minute. Yeah. <laughs> this is pathetic. <laughs> this this is wouldn't amazing, happen with Dr. Fox. He'd have it Foxy all planned. Foxy wouldn't do this. Can I, can I say as well, it's a bank, um, the train station with one vowel. Yeah, but there's loads, aren't there? He hasn't thought it through. No. Bo as well, there's many. Listen, no. Carl, they yeah. can't have a number. It can't have been that. I can't remember it. What was it? I remember I tried it the last time I tried this it. This is a shambles. And I couldn't work it out. Then there was, there was wrong answers. I remember Aldwych came up. Maybe right. it's Aldwych. What's, what? What's oh. Carl doing now? What? Who's he talking to? I don't know, he's talking to her, but what? Say again? Look, quick, let's think of something. Come hey, on. Tell her, are you still on this line? No, she's, he's picked up the phone now. So what so am I doing? Shit, we're giving away, we're, we're letting people behind the curtain. Let's keep up this veneer of professionalism. This is so rubbish, Come on, no, 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 don't, okay. don't draw attention to it. Okay, alright. Uh, let's just talk and make... So, uh, Steve, what, hey. what, what are you doing tonight? Looking forward to pop stars? <gasps> Looking forward to a lot. Who, Who do you want to win? I'm glad you've asked, Rick. Um, I'd love to see Darius have a bit of success, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think uh, it's probably going to be the stutterer. I think it is going to be um, Gareth. He has a name there, Steve. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be Gareth, yeah, apparently sure, in the sure. polls in the week he's getting twice and we're back, don't we? Okay. Alright, Carl, um, so, right, okay, so she's getting a t-shirt, is she? Lovely. Right, is we, who's, who's that on the line? Next contestant. Hello? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> An error? I, I mean, we couldn't do this worse. <laughs> Go on. Exactly. Hello? Hello. Hello, Hi. who's that? It's Dan. Dan, hello, Dan. Danny. All right, so, mate. do you want to go to Incubus? I'd love to, man. Okay. Hold on, this is pointless, because he's just heard the last, uh, he's heard the answer. Yeah, definitely Bucks Fizz. This is mad, we didn't think this through! <laughs> no, but let's be honest, it, he wouldn't have been on the line if he didn't know the answer. Are you cheating? No. Dan. Dan, he said he's not cheating. For, uh, this is failsafe. <laughs> That's failsafe. This <laughs> is our rigorous, I can't <laughs> believe this. Is, uh, Th Dan, you're going to Incubus. Oh, cheers, uh, man. Well That's done. Well done. Oh. Nice Thanks cheers. for listening. Cheers. Oh. Carl, what do we have to do? Do we just hang up, or what happens? No, you play a song and... Play a song then. You've got oh. his details. Yeah. Oh, play God. it. Just what is it that you want to do? Well, we want to be free. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. Fever, just today. That reminds me of this Christmas where my 51 year old brother wouldn't let anyone near the PlayStation 2 because he was playing Gran Turismo. And he has to build his car up and buy it. He just played it from about six o'clock till sort of three in the morning. Was it really? bought for him or about three? Uh, I, d I don't know, but uh, we, we had to watch him. <laughs> <laughs> Why that song particularly? Uh, Why it's that on. It's on it. Oh, it's it's the, it's I think I think feed a feature all over it, don't they? On the right, on the, right, on the right. soundtrack, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I was on the tube the other day, Rick. So oh. I was just coming into Finsbury, uh, Finchley Road. Yeah. And uh, I was on the train. I, 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 mean, I know you don't travel on the tube anymore. No. 
famous. But um, I, I never did. No, no. Fair it's, it's not that I don't really recognise. It's just it's beneath me. <laughs> fair enough. And um, <clears throat> and they're on, on the tube in the, each carriage on these newer ones. There are kind of these uh, flaps that are normally locked closed, and there was one of them that's swinging open. And inside there were various buttons like on off, you know, self destruct, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But it's like doors operating. Train so. quicker. Exactly. And you were thinking like you don't want some you know kind of oik. Sort no. of fiddling around, pressing buttons and stuff. It could be quite dangerous. Yeah. So I got off a finch and I thought, oh, I'll be a good commuter. I'll mention this to the staff, and and they'll probably, you know, they'll, they'll they'll thank me for it. And if it's an attractive young staff member, you know, I mean, they never are on the tube. Have you ever seen an attractive member of staff at a tube station? Oh come on, steady. They on. are such freaks. I no, mean, I know that's the pot kettle they're all, black. Thing, they're all from Devon, apparently. They're grotesque people, really. All right, steady on. And uh, so anyway, I went up to this guy. I thought the I'd uniforms do zone out though, do they? They don't. It's pretty grim. And so yeah. I went up to this guy. I said to him, excuse me, I was just on the train there, and um, there was a flap open. I could see all these buttons and things. He went, right. I was like, yeah, well, I just think, you know, it might be, you know, you know wandering hands, a small child or something. Went, right. A small yeah. child? He went, he went, what carriage was it? I said, well, I don't really know what carriage it was. I just, maybe the next stop someone should come and check. He went, well, how are they going to check if they don't know what carriage it's in? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I just thought, I just wanted to smack him in the face. I just thought, you know, I'm in a hurry. I've got no reason. There's no gain for me about telling this. It's, it's not going to help me out in any way, not financially, nothing. I'm I just trying to help you out, and that's your attitude. And I was absolutely I know. Livid. I'm getting so intolerant in my I old age. I won't. I can't uh, uh, stand bad, it. Bad service, bad attitude, just, uh, oh, it drives me mad. It makes my blood boil, and I, oh. Livid. I was one time, right, I was down in the centre of town. This was after some of the big explosions, the IRA had you know, various things. And everyone was on kind of bomb alert, very nervous, very scared. And uh, there was a, a, a sort of a bag in the street, you know, this was the centre of London or whatever, and, and my friends and I were a bit edgy, but a bit nervous. And we're outside this pub and we saw the bag and we thought, maybe we should sort of tell, we'll tell the landlord from that. So we told the landlord, right, and he, he came out and he looked at it, he thought, oh, you're right, lad, it does look a bit shifty. Um, and this is what he did, this was his security measure, right, <laughs> he was going to call the police, but in the meantime, he picked up one of those sandwich boards that advertises what food's being served in the pub, just placed it over the top of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's fail. So that is what the bomb disposal unit use <laughs> exactly. very often. That you see them uh, up and down Oxford Street. They're they're not people, se um, you know, selling stuff. Sure, that's just they're they bomb will leap shield. on a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But I love the idea because what we did was we moved about a hundred yards down the road because we thought if the bomb goes off, we want to see it. That'll be dramatic. Yeah, we don't want to get <laughs> yeah. <you> know, injured. <laughs> Yeah. But I love the idea of like a, a sandwich board flying off into the air, and just embedding itself in someone's head. Yeah, well, no yeah. one would have been. Who do I sue? That sandwich board. Well, that was that was Ron, the landlord. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My God, is that is that is that a Cumberland pie for five ninety five? I can't believe I like. <laughs> John, I think there's something more serious. There's a anyway, I'm <laughs> paramedics going. I can't. Ninety nine p a pie. <laughs> it's pretty. I'm going to come back here. <laughs> So anyway, so this, he calls the police, right, and so after a while, about, you know, it's like 40 minutes later, and I think the police do a good job, I'm not trying to make down on the police, I think it's a, it's a good job, and I, I respect the police, but, um, this, this police van turns up after about 40 minutes of waiting, right, and this, this guy leaps out of the van, and he goes, what, you're the guys who reported this, are you? And we went, yeah, he went, right, and he looked at the bag, and he picked it up, he unzipped it, and there was just some rubbish in there, and he just, and he just looked, he just threw it at us, he went, there's your bomb for you, and threw it at us, to teach us a lesson, and then got in the van and drove off. And it was like, uh, oh what, what lesson are you teaching us about what did you being do? Did you, you presumably reported him, did you? Well, of course we're not. What's going to happen? You know, it's not. Do you know what I think? I think he thought it was a bomb. Right. And he was trying to blow you up to <laughs> yeah. teach you a lesson. Well, possibly. That's bad. Just, that is just, really bad. It just winds me right up, stuff like Once, that. Once, right? Uh, it's <laughs> me and Bill, we had sort of, it was like 1983, and we had like extensions and um, cut off t shirts and jeans and uh sexy uh, yeah, you know, like make oh no it. And we were just eating chips on a corner, right? And this it was a Saturday, so I assume it was like um um <laughs> football patrol, about twelve police in the car and they sort of slowed down and looked at us and he wound the window down and the bloke driving shouted, You look like a couple of prats <laughs> Bill turned to me and went, is that an offence? <laughs> and I remember <laughs> wanting to laugh at the joke, but thinking, that's annoying. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that is an they were right. Well, yeah, but no, they, they were right. right. But it's not really a police issue, I don't yeah. think. Someone called into a uh, HQ that morning. Guys, you've never seen anyone looks a bit, uh, you know, the fashion Flash police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, looks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've heard a bit. There's a bit of a, uh, a to do. Apparently, a couple of prats are walking round. Yeah, uh, uh, we need someone to go on fashion police <laughs> patrol. <laughs> Send in Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but you know we we respect the police. Yeah, absolutely. We're not no, I don't, I'm not having a go. It's just those few that give them a no. bad name, really. Yeah, exactly. High hey, five for it. hey, I think the boys in blue do a good job. <laughs> they do, they do, and do the firemen. Yeah, the firemen do especially well. firemen. I remember once. This is really embarrassing. This is the arrogance of youth, right? 
in a, in a hall of residence. Every time someone did toast, the fire alarms went off. I remember once it was like two in the morning and we all had to go outside and it was just toast set off thing, but it, it was linked. And about eight fire engines turned up and I, I, they were all coming in, right? And I said, oh, this is so embarrassing. Why am I telling this? Go on. I just went, there's enough of you. God! And the fireman fight when I said, he just went, shut your mouth, mate. Yeah. And I thought, oh God, he's right. He's one of those things you remember ten years later. Yeah, that's a horrible thing. What a tw- I know, but I, I when want you're to publicly and- apologise oh, to I'm the fireman. Oh, I'm so game, sorry. Man. I'm so sorry. Because I, I never did oh, stuff like that. Oh, that is twice. I was too busy saying, can I try on your helmet? <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Oh, we better play another yeah, song, haven't we? Oh. This is, uh, um, a great track. This is, uh, Groove Armada. It's from, uh, the album Goodbye Country, Hello Nightclub. It's the opening track. It's sort called, uh, Sun Touch. I think you'll like this, Steve. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Groove Armada there. And Sun Toucher. Did you like that? I didn't mind that, actually. I didn't realise you were a uh, Groove Armada dance music fan. Well, no, Jane played that music today. I hadn't heard that before, but I loved it immediately. Mm. I, I, oh, it's great. It's like yeah. a soundtrack mixed with a little bit of sure, sure. hip-hop and, oh, it's all, it's all like a big, all a big like mix, a big isn't melting it? pot. Yeah, yeah. I just wish that's what the world was, really. So where we could so just, so so you know, everyone yeah. could live in harmony. I wish it was an onion. Oh, if only the world were a great big onion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, maybe one day. Well, this is nearly the end of the show. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's been uh, Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with Carl. And <laughs> uh, it's been a great show. And, uh, you know, I've just, uh, there's been some laughter, there's been some tears, there's, there's been, been some jokes. Tears. There's been some political satire. <laughs> I'd like to think so. But above all, there's been some chat with friends. <laughs> and there's been some bloody great music. Let's some, not forget that. I don't think we need to swear <laughs> at this time. <laughs> it's play juncture. Yeah. Um, because you make yourself look a cock, <laughs> and me look a twat, <laughs> and true. Carl look like a complete... <laughs> Song for Go ladies! On. Um, rarely do you get a chance to play on a radio station Nearly seven minutes... wanker. <laughs> seven minutes worth of Led Zeppelin. But screw it, I thought, damn, hey. you know, it's the end of the show, we don't give a damn, it's Be an amazing song. Be careful with the language, <laughs> screw damn and bloody, do not a sermon make. <laughs> Rick, yeah, it's a beautiful yeah, song, yeah. if you're not a Zeppelin fan, stick with it's it, it's not roaring rock as you'd expect, the rain song from Houses of the Holy, oh. see you next time. See you later. <laughs>